so it's a pleasure to have Lucas here um, as a soloist. I admire that he does things in not the usual way. So we thought he would be a great collaborator on doing repertoire that nobody would otherwise do. We're in the midst of a Beethoven celebration. Beethoven is probably the most famous, legendary, most misunderstood, most talked about composer in the Western canon. When he was really on his game, he was uh, incomparable. If you're a concert organization like the American Symphony Orchestra, you have to do something with Beethoven, right? 250 years. So we decided we're going to do something that nobody else would do. Number one, we're going to remember somebody who deserves to be remembered on an anniversary who isn't remembered, and that's Galina Svolskaya, the greatest of the Russian women composers of the 20th century. Unfairly understood by people as being a student of Shostakovich's, that's all. Perhaps a love interest of Shostakovich, but she was in a very unusual musical mind, and uh, she authorized very few pieces, and one of them is this piano concerto, which is relatively early in her career. Yeah, it's one of the first pieces, and it's very inspired by all uh, the repertoire for this formation that went before her. The form is also very unusual. It's a big sonata form, uh, so you can recognize big two ide contrasting ideas, but it's like in several little episodes, little movements that are making variations on the same thematic uh, material. So the music is quite, uh, and uh, I mean, it's ent entertaining. It's not uh, always the same, like you can hear a lot of contemporary music when it's like very long, like 10 minutes of the same atmosphere and not very changing. This music is changing a lot, actually. And it uh, it makes some a lot of references with uh, other pieces, uh, like concerto for uh, piano and string orchestras. Um, so it's quite familiar to the ear. There are, there are the elements that are familiar to the ear. It's not the kind of contemporary music you would be shocked by. To me, when I looked at the score, I realized it has a kind of Beethovenian gestural quality. It is very dramatic. It has kind of heroic use of the piano as a kind of percussive, sonorous instrument. At the same time, the thematic, it, 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 she works on uh, cells like Beethoven does. Rather than talking about themes or melodies, it's better to talk about cells, something that is very recogni recognizable. Ta -ta! Yeah. Yeah, Ta -ta! Right. And throughout the piece, you will hear it again in different ways. She was very strong at ident identifying an inspiration that could also be shared by audiences, which is the main quality of the composers to, to find something quite universal. For me, a composer is, is a humanist in a way, to be inspired and, and pick an idea that inspired you and to transform it into something that could be understood by other human beings. She has a, a very distinctive sound, so it doesn't sound like anybody else, it sounds like herself. The reason I chose it um, for this Beethoven context is that the music, this piece particularly, has a kind of gestural relationship to the heroic period of Beethoven. The other thing that Lucas is playing with us is the Liszt fantasy on the ruins of Athens. He felt himself a kind of heir to Beethoven in some way. There are several orchestral pieces for piano and orchestra. And it's very rarely done. This was a big hit. Every music lover knew the tunes that you will hear in this wonderful fantasy. This doesn't have much performance history in New York. Neither of these pieces has a performance history in New York. And we just want to show that just because you haven't heard of it doesn't make it not as good as the stuff you have heard. So we're really interested in um, dusting off all the treasures in the back room. And I'm very proud uh, of sharing this experience. I feel myself involved in this uh, understanding pieces because as soon as my, I had the chance to really uh, get opportunities to perform, I started to defend uh, some repertoire that actually doesn't w would not need to be defended because it's great music. It yeah. needs to be played. I think about what, it's, what is musical involvement in general, to deal with music uh, on a daily basis. For me, it, it means, and I know that it will speak to your heart and your mind, uh, being avid of, of, mu of artistic culture. Playing this piece of Ulzowskaya will help me to play the music of Shostakovich, but also to play the music of Bach and play this Liszt fantasy will help me to understand better the other. I think mm -hmm. that all the creations are connected with each other and doing something will always enrich the thing. So one one being stuck in a certain repertoire, like just playing Chopin or just playing Liszt or everything, would not be for me a complete musician because complete musician is impossible. You always need to eat more and more elements to feed uh, the need. You speak very well about this. There's a, basically a, um, we're 
all sitting on a three-legged stool. One leg is new music, music being written now. The other leg is all the famous music everybody knows. Emperor Concerto, Chopin Concerto, Rachmaninoff. And the third leg is the history that isn't well-known, that ought to be well-known, with the way we retell our own past. And then there's the changing of our attitude to the past, which determines who we are in the present and the future. And that rediscovery and reorganization of the past is what this kind of concert is about. Nice talking to you. And for those of you who are watching this, I regret that you have nothing better to do. But of the available choices, probably this is not the worst. <laughs>